Hello there and welcome to CNR Extra on City TV. My name is Philip Ni Latte. Coming up. <music> President Tekufuado reinstates suspended MC for second D Takrade. Twenty twenty one Auditor General's report names top judges for unlawfully purchasing auction vehicles. Also, chiefs in the Bono East region appealed to President Tekufado to help restore policing activities in the Inkuranza area following their withdrawal after attacks by the youth. The absence of police services and the municipality have led to an increase in criminal activities and have also disrupted economic activities. And later, a customer who was sold contaminated fuel at Atimpuku Shell Fuel Station threatens to drag the oil marketing company to court over the incident. The manager was aware that um, the fuel was diluted because it had been told to him. He said, no, I was like, so get a clear bottle, I'll fetch a little see. And we all saw the distinct separation between the two. I am definitely taking them on. Once again, you're welcome to CNR Extra. The, pro, the program is interactive, and you can join us via WhatsApp on 0550-585832. Again, I'm here with Neil Latte Latte to help me with the conversation. Neil Latte, you're welcome once Thank again. Thank you so much, Philip. I'm happy to be here once Thank again. Thank you. Let's go straight to our first story, where City News has gathered that uh, the MC for Second D Takrade, Abdo Mumin Issa, has been reinstated by President Tekufuado. Let's bring you more in this video. Information gathered by City News indicates that the Metropolitan Chief Executive for the Second D Takrade Metropolitan Assembly, Abdo Mumin Issa, has been reinstated by President Takufuado. Now, Mr. Issa was directed to step aside after he was caught on tape verbally assaulting a police officer who had arrested him for flouting road traffic regulations. He was charged with assault of a public officer, offensive conduct conducive to breach of peace and disturbing the peace in a public place. Now, his last appearance in court was in July 2022. City news sources, however, reveal that the Metropolitan Chief Executive was recalled to office on Monday by the President. So the MC early this year was seen or a video uh, was made of him and also some audio tape came out that he verbally assaulted a police officer for arresting him for road infractions. I think that once he's been reinstated, other MCs must learn from this as well. Uh, not, not really necessarily, Philip, because look, uh, this is a man who came under heavy criticisms mm. and public condemnation as a result of what he did. But for starters, uh, the president, as we all know, does not owe anyone any explanation as to who he appoints or disappoints in his government. But like I'm saying, this is a man who went all the way to say all manner of things, conducted himself in a manner that was not appropriate. So I was thinking that uh, investigations into this case would have been concluded because we understand that the last time he was in court in somewhere, somewhere July. in July. So I believe that the case has not even ended properly, but he's been reinstated. What message does this send to, you know, other people serving in the president's government? Because this is a president who said uh, no one engaged in any form of illegal or, or mis uh, misconduct yeah. will be shielded. And for the president to, uh, you know, reinstate him, I am thinking that it's, it shows clearly uh, that... <laughs> it, for, 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 for some people in the government, it will be like, okay, if I misconduct myself, what at all is going to happen? I'll be indicted and then I'll be reinstated. You'll be asked to step aside uh, for some investigation for, to carry on so, so and later you'll be reinstated. Instated, exactly the point here, Philip. So it is not encouraging uh, that his reinstatement to me is not encouraging. I only think that it is serving or is, it puts the signal out there that people can only be emboldened to, mm. you know, do all manner of things. At the end of the day, they will be uh, in, <laughs> interdicted, asked to step aside and then they will be reinstated. So I was looking forward to see, you know, a, a, a full closure to this matter. But again, because don't you think that what no. even came out mm. with the uh, audio that the public 
listened or we all had access to listen to. Mm. Uh, it's a form to even bring to the public domain that what the MC, he didn't do well. People backlashed him yeah, and of all course, that. that that's and all that's that. why that is what compelled yeah. also the president to also ask him to set a, a step aside. Also, that pol particular police officer that the MC threatened that will be moved to a rural <laughs> area that <laughs> he's going to, yes, to he is going to serve of his uh, service there was actually promoted. Mm. So I think that now that he's been reinstated, this will serve as a caution to all government officials that you can't really use your power to uh, say you're going to override a police officer or somebody who is trying to let you do the right thing. Yeah, Philip, uh, I'm of a different opinion, like I'm saying. He, he, was, he was being charged on three counts, mm. you know, um, um, uh, abuse of office. Uh, um, uh, assault of a ass public officer. Assault of a public officer. Uh, causing dangerous driving and then mm -hmm. breach to public peace. So uh, the, the, the investigation and the court issue should have ended. It's, it's, so, that, end. so that we, yeah, we should have seen, you know, full closure to well, this matter. So Whether he will be fined or he will be made to to stay behind bars or something. So, so it's going it to serve as a deterrent, a deterrent to, others. to others. So that is what my colleague is also calling for, at least the investigations to come to a finality so that we know the actions that have been meted out to this particular officer. Let's move straight to another story where the Auditor General has cited 19 past and current judges of uh, Ghana's Superior Court for acquiring um, state vehicles. Let's bring you more in this video. The Auditor General has cited 19 past and current judges of Ghana's Superior Court for acquiring state vehicles, a move that contravenes Regulations 158 of the Public Financial Management Regulations 2019 LI 2378. Now, the report states that 19 vehicles were auctioned by the service for over a million Ghana CDs without approval from the Minister of Finance. The following report has more details. The Auditor General recommended that the auction should be nullified and the vehicles recovered in the absence of the approval from the Minister of Finance. This follows the examination of the records of the Transport Unit for Judicial Service, which revealed that 19 official vehicles were auctioned by the service for 1,023,507 Ghana cities without approval from the Minister of Finance, contrary to Regulation 158 of the Public Financial Management Regulations 2019, which states that Principal Spending Officer of a covered entity shall obtain the prior written approval of the Minister for the Transfer, Exchange, Sale, Donation, Contribution in Kind, trust and any other disposal of any vehicles of the covered entity. Some of the judges captured in this particular report include Justice Kobia, who bought a Toyota Land Cruiser for 57,975 Ghana cities. Justice Badegbe, who bought a Toyota Land Cruiser for 67,047 Ghana cities. Justice Julius Ansan, who bought a Toyota Land Cruiser registered 2016, for 75,643 Ghana CDs, and Justice Yao Apao, who bought a Toyota Land Cruiser for 56,606 Ghana CDs. Relating to the Ministry of Justice and Attorney General, the Auditor General noted that the Ministry do not insure its official vehicles. According to the Auditor General, his review showed that in November 2020, the Ministry paid a judgment debt of 266,399 Ghana cities as compensation in respect of a road accident involving the ministry's uninsured Nissan patrol vehicle, which resulted in the death of one person and various degrees of injuries to four other persons. Also, on the issue of an end salary, the Auditor General noted that two staff of the ministry, Lili Badungwana Atutiaga, resigned on January 17, 2021, and Joycelyn Eji vacated post September 2019, but were, however, paid a total of an end salary of 170,123 Ghana cities for the period September 2019 to February 2021. The Auditor General has therefore recommended that the Chief Director should recover the total amount from Lili Badungbana Atutiaga and Joycelyn Eji, failure of which the Chief Director and the validators should be held liable for the refund of the amount. For the Ministry of Finance, the Auditor General noted that the Ministry of Finance Sub Consolidated Fund and Chief Director's bank accounts were garnished by a court in July 2021. The Auditor General noted 
that in March 2022, three other accounts of the ministry, namely the Special Fiscal Programs and Payments, Investor Relation Payments and Ghana Cares accounts, were also Ghana Shade, and as a result, the ministry was unable to use the five accounts for any transactions. According to the Auditor General, the Ministry of Finance explained that most of the Ghana Shade orders were occasioned by other MDAs who did not pay for goods and services supplied and judgment debts arising from cases brought against them. The Ministry of Finance also indicated that in many instances, the Ministry was not informed about the court proceedings and subsequent Ganache orders to enable its legal unit make presentation at the courts. The Auditor General also observed the issue of unrecovered loans and advances made to staff of the Ministry of Finance. According to the Auditor General, the Ministry of Finance grant loans and advances to civil and public servants, but it does not have a control mechanism for the recovery of such loans and advances. The Auditor General indicates that there were advances and loans as old as 4 years, 8 months and 11 years respectively, yet to be fully recovered. The Auditor General noted that three persons were paid a total of 1 million 112,895 Ghana cities as salaries for the period January 2020 to December 2021, but he could not trace their personal files and names on the dominant role of the minister. So the Auditor General's report came out with a lot of revelations, and it mm. looks like uh, one would say that at least uh, the due process should have been followed. For the and if that is not done, then the, the certainly uh, the person who ensures that the vehicles went out without the due process being followed should be sanctioned. Uh, maybe when these persons are called before the Public Accounts Committee, Committee yes. they will provide those explanations. But like you rightly indicated, uh, the Auditor General reports very voluminous. A lot of infractions have come to you know the public light and this is actually not the first time we've seen something like this each year the auditor general releases the report and then we see a number of you know financial irregularities in there and so for me i i think this is not something we are not privy to we are very much aware of every single thing that the report reveals every now and then maybe the time now is for us to look at the processes of retrieving these uh, you know misappropriated funds because usually the auditor general who has the, uh, the responsibility to you know, surcharge and disallow, will only do that and bring uh, out the recommendations. But as whether we are able to retrieve the monies, just like this particular case, you are yes. calling for the nullification of the auction vehicles, vehicles and, and the retrieval of same. We don't know if that will, will happen. And that is where we find ourselves in this situation. Every now and then we talk about how tough times are and then if you have monies being uh, spent in a manner that's it's not appropriate, then we'd always have ourselves to blame. And, and, and Philip, I, I don't know, but I remember when um, the former Auditor General, mm -hmm. Daniel Domelevo, Domelevo yeah. was in, in office, he attempted to surcharge the then senior minister, Yao Osafo Mafo. And then we know how everything ended. And so I, I, I think maybe a cause for uh, the, the ability of the Auditor General to have that prosecutorial power oh, should yes. also because this is usually these things do not only come up as a result of you know civil cases there are also some criminal elements in there so maybe uh, the auditor general should be empowered and uh, we hear a lot of civil society organizations making those calls and all that and also inter collaboration among the you know various state anti-craft bodies i think this is the time if the if the auditor general triggers something like this what is the attorney general also doing the economic and organized crime um, office eoko and also even now the office of the special prosecutor because we can't be having this conversation annually because <laughs> we shouldn't just have the uh, reports released and we have in the uh, opportunity to see these reports and at the end of the day it's going to be swept under the carpet because something has to be mm, done about it because obviously the auditor general will always review the rots but how we manage to deal with it is the issue is the issue <laughs> so uh, the report has come out we shouldn't just have the report um in here that at least we will have access to read it and all that and certain infractions are in there, certain things weren't done right, then at the end of the day, we wouldn't see actions taken against individuals who uh, went into certain things that weren't properly done. Let's move straight to another story up there in the Bono East region where uh, the chiefs have appealed to President Kufado to help restore policing activities in the Inkaranza area. Let's bring you more in this video. 
Police in the Bono East region have appealed to President Kufuad to help restore policing activities in the Nkranza area. This follows the withdrawal of the police from the area after attacks by the youth. City News' Samiria Fehasmo in the following report. A delegation led by the president of the Bono East Regional House of Chiefs, Pimam Pimiyao Kabesa V, was at the Jubilee House to meet President Kufado on pressing issues within the region since its creation in 2018. Pimam Pimiyao Kabesa says the unavailability of police personnel in the Nkranza area is affecting policing and increasing crime in the area. Some irate youth in Nkranza a month ago attacked the police station, freeing at least three suspects in custody. The youth were protesting the death of 28-year-old trader Albert Kwesi Donko, reportedly killed by the police. Pemam Peya Kobesa V says the president must intervene. The absence of police services in the municipality have led to the increase in criminal activities and have also disrupted economic activities. Traders are afraid to go to Nkransa to do businesses. And this is causing huge losses to farmers as their produce are left to rot in their farms. Public servants and the general public live in a, a state of fear. We therefore appeal to you to call the police administration to restore police services in the Nkransa municipality. President Kufado on his part says he will get the Inspector General of Police to work on the request. The police is IGP spoke to me just before this meeting. And I want to re re uh, state to you what he said to me. That it isn't the case that the po police services have been withdrawn completely from Nkranza. According to the IGP, it is charge office duties in Nkranza that have been withdrawn. I.e., if you have an issue, Instead of making a report there, you have to go and make a report to a police station in the adjoining community. But that there are some 80 to 100 police personnel from headquarters in Accra and from Kumasi and other adjoining communities undertaking other police duties in Nkranza. But I think that what we want is to, as soon as possible, have the police resume normal operations in, 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 in Nkranza. And I'm going to make sure that as soon as possible, the IGP is in a position to do that. I recognize that it's extremely important for law and order. In the so President Chikufado has indicated that the IGP has given his strongest indication mm. yet that uh, policing in the community will resume. At least it's, it's a good news. Oh, certainly, but I'm also thinking that I, d I don't think the chief should even make the appeal to President Ekufado in the first place mm. because, look, the only agency mandated to provide, you know, security is the, police. Is the Ghana Police Service. And for them to draw their, you know, services for this particular time, I, I think it's really one because, look, no matter how difficult the residents of Nkranza is, I think the police have the responsibility to maintaining law and order there. Why do I say this? Because if things, it's better to have heavy police security uh, presence in that area than have none at all. Because uh, this incident, we understand, we know how the youth, you know, took the law into their own hands and did whatever they mm. did back then. But if, as we speak, we do not have uh, police visibility there, I, I think it's just a recipe for more, you know, uh, dangerous things because uh, the people when they decide to take the law into there it is the same police that would have to go in there to calm tensions down so i think the earlier they move to the site and uh, the place as the president has indicated the better for all of us philip so uh, at least if, if the uh, chiefs there have also put um asked president to at least speak to the igb for 
policing activities mm. to commence or to return in yeah. the community. Uh, the youth, if the police officers are being brought there to you, I think that chaos or that have also. Uh, uh, and because yeah. um, mm. Albert actually, mm. that is Albert Donko, he was um, some way, he was uh, killed on the 18th of May 2020, 2022. Um, during a protest that that is what uh, agitated the youth and they also did what mm. they so, did. So, so I think that the police should not throw its hands in despair. Mm. There's a time for them to, you know, sit with the chiefs of the area. They should develop a roadmap. That's why there are some police, uh, you know, actions like curfews, like all those kind of things. They should just develop this roadmap and see how they are able to talk to residents so that when the police are moved in there, just like you indicated, uh, things do not get out of hand. Exactly. So we all pray that things wouldn't get out of hand and the police should return to duty as soon as possible. Let's move straight to another story where Michael Apia, a champion, who is a young man who purchased uh, diluted fuel at the Shell fuel station uh, near Adomi Bridge at Atimpoku, is threatening to take legal action against the company. Let's bring you more in this video. Diluted fuel at the Shell filling station near Adomi Bridge at Atimpoku in the eastern region has threatened to take legal action against the company. Already the National Petroleum Authority, NPA, has shut down the operations of the Shell filling station where the incident happened. The following report has more details. Social media went ablaze on Monday, August 29, after a young man, Michael Apia Champong, went viral on social media after posting a video on Facebook complaining about the diluted fuel he purchased at a Shell fuel station near the Adome Bridge at Atimpoku in the Eastern Region. The video received national attention, leading to the National Petroleum Authority's decision to shut down the filling station for investigations to begin. However, in an interview with City News, Michael Lechampon described the situation as a scary one. He alleged that management of the station knew about the selling of water laced petroleum products to unsuspecting customers, hence his conclusion to file a suit against Shell. I just started shaking and then it, the engine went off and so um, we had to sort of guide it to a stop. Um, which was fortunate for us because at the time that it happened, because we were in town, we weren't speeding. And so you start thinking, wow, what if you had been speeding and the engine had gone off and you can't really control the car, what happens next? We were speeding. What would have happened to us? And then thought, uh, my family, my kids, I'm thinking everybody like that. That is how fleeting life was in just over somebody's negligence and yeah it could have cost our lives yes when i got there the the manager was aware that um the fuel was diluted because it had been told to him and i asked him um, um whether he had checked the the fuel he said no i was like so get a clear bottle um, fetch it let's all see and so i videoed him fetching it and we all saw the distinct separation between the two i'm definitely taking them on he further advised the management of Shell Group of Companies to be stand on quality control and called for the punishment of workers who were negligent of their duties. These things keep happening. When I posted on Facebook, I had all these people sending me messages. I even got some others who were affected from that at Timpoku station on that same day and didn't even know it was a full problem till they saw the video and realized, wait a minute, that was why we had the problem that we had. So... I, I don't think it's a one-off situation, it's not an isolated situation, but I do sincerely feel that they need, um, they need to feel it this time around, they need to be made an example of, they need, um, on, the, on the principle of it, and also to safeguard the, the masses, people, people need to be taken more seriously. This, this wasn't good at all, and especially from a, uh, from a brand like, like Shell, it's a global um, um, brand. They don't have the luxury of being this negligent. However, Shell Group in a statement explained that there was heavy rainfall on the said date of the incident, causing water to sip in the area of operation at the station. The company added that it halted operation after it discovered the water contamination and it is providing assistance to affected customers. The head of quality control at the National Petroleum Authority, Saeed Kutia, however, explained that apart from the shutdown of the station, measures have been put in place to prevent a reoccurrence of the situation. 
So at least it's it's a good step that at least the Shell uh, company admitted that mm. this is the problem, came out with a statement to clarify that, oh, okay, so it was some rainstorm that caused this thing and uh, they are doing all they could to address uh, the situation. But I think that Michael Apia Achampo also taking the charge to um, mm. seek legal redress is also, uh, well, he's entitled to it. Yeah, well, yes. that's his prerogative. He is also has the right to, you know, take a legal action as part of the options available to him as an individual who feels that he was treated or he was served unfairly. Mm. And but the larger conversation, Philip, is that we know that the National Petroleum Authority, Authority which yes. is the regulator in this case, also has a duty to ensure, you know, proper standards. And so for me, I also think that they have admitted to the challenge. They have taken steps to ensuring that they will investigate uh, the, the, the issue to the, the bottom. But you see, Philip, if, if Michael goes to court, he, he's likely to be compensated. Mm. But what about the rest of us who don't have, you know, uh, the, the, the wherewithal to also seek legal redress? redress you yes. buy fuel, yeah. I also buy fuel. We all use fuel in one way. It could happen to any one of us. Could, so I think the larger issue, aside from uh, the option he has decided to the take, regulator up, should the be regulator, up the Ministry of Energy, mm. Shell itself, there's a time for them to, you know, sit down and look at how they are able to solve this issue once and for all. Because if it becomes one too many, mm. it puts their name into, you know, disrepute. So uh, we will only wish Michael well as he is going to, you know, seek legal redress. As but for me, I, I like the fact that he was very observant, at least. Mm -hmm. Not just buying the fuel, but he took it upon himself to uh, notice that what is actually going into my fuel mm -hmm. tank. And he noticed that, no, it's a product that has been mixed with water. Mm -hmm. And that is what brought up this conversation. So maybe my word to individuals who buy fuel is that you should also be observant. I remember very well I bought fuel at a particular fuel station and my gauge didn't go up. I had to now go <laughs> to the manager and tell him that, you know what, my gauge didn't go up. And they had to address the situation. Mm -hmm. So um, we are calling on the National Petroleum Authority. They are doing a, a human yeah, job. Yeah, we have to recommend, yes. uh, uh, commend them because they took prompt action mm -hmm. in you know, mm -hmm. ensuring that the fuel station or shut down exactly mm. so they are doing a good job but at least uh, checking other fuel stations or the pumps will also be uh, better so that at least we will buy quality fuel into our vehicles um, another story that we will bring you is from the manya Krobo traditional area actually the traditional council there has assured residents of both the yellow and manya Krobo municipalities that the impasse between ECG and the residents there will be a thing of the past as avenues have been exploited for peaceful resolution. Uh, let's bring you more in this video. The Manya Krobo Traditional Council has assured residents in both Yulu and Manya Krobo municipalities that a current impasse between the Electricity Company of Ghana, ECG, and the residents will be a thing of the past as all avenues have been exploited for a peaceful resolution. Speaking at the launch of the 2022 Mayim Festival in Udumase on Tuesday, the chief of Asasawa, Nene Tetiku Baraji I, assured residents, revelers and all patrons of the annual Mayim Festival that all outstanding issues will be resolved for a peaceful festival in October. City News' is Neil Ni Amati Kanaku has more in this report. The Mayim Festival is an annual harvest festival celebrated by the chiefs and people of Manyakrobo in the eastern region. The festival was established by Nene Azuma Tekoli in 1944 to replace the already existing festival called Yeli Yem, which literally means eating of yam. It is usually celebrated in the month of October in Dodowa and also the Shai in the towns of Somanya and Odumase. The festival is celebrated for one week, mostly from the last two Sundays of the month of October. This year's celebration of the Yanwang Mayan Festival is set to become a remarkable celebration which may be used to end the raging impasse between the people of Krobo and the electricity company of Ghana, ECG. Their protracted impasse, which has lingered on for years, has become a source of worry for residents, the local assemblies, traditional authorities and foreigners operating businesses in the Krobo enclave. But according to Manya Krobo Traditional Council, this year's celebration will not be characterized or marred by the impasse as all avenues are being exploited by the traditional authorities for the outstanding issues to be resolved amicably before the festival commence. This was revealed at the 2022 media launch of the Mayan Festival at Odumasi on Tuesday. Nene Tete Ahosa I, 
is the chairman of the local organizing committee of this year's festival. This launching of 2022 Manya Kobo Festival, we used to remember our ancestors and do some small customs about for young people who are coming to see that this, if, if once you are a native of the uh, town or the community, we did it yearly. And when you come to your hometown, you see exactly what your great, great grandfathers and mothers did, just to remember them and to know customs of our community. This issue is not an issue, but some people, some few people, especially the youth, they are those who are convincing the old men and the old women. Once you are using electricity, you have to pay a bill. And due to the bailing, there was a mistake. So when they came to give them the bill, they said it was a mistake. Due to that, they said, okay, once you said you, our people are cheating you, ECG have less people to go through their houses. Now the houses are plenty. So we are giving you prepaid. But some of them don't understand the prepaid. They were saying when they are paying the prepaid, when they buy the prepaid, they will add their old debt to the prepaid. And that one is the argument between the communities and the electricity company of Ghana. The festival, which brings people and investors from far and near yearly, may not witness the kind of euphoria which normally characterizes the celebration, as investors, patrons and other revelers may be scared away due to the recent developments in the area. But the chairman is allaying their fears. They will be safe. Nothing will come. They will be safe because now ECG is fixing the prepaid for them and then even the light is on. So investors who are coming, they are free and safe. What is the traditional council doing to ensure a peaceful event? The Neteteku Bagbaji the first is the chief of Asesawa and he spoke on behalf of Nene Sakite the second, the corner of Manya Krobo, on their plans. We are educating our people so that whenever the military men and the ECG people comes to their area, they shouldn't do anything with them. They shouldn't struggle with them. They should allow them to install their prepaid. Last week, Monday, we had some problems at Nuaso. We don't want such things to repeat again. So I'm giving them the assurance that those things will not happen again. By the time, it is the electricity problem that is creating. But before the festival, this thing will be, it will be twin of the past. By that time, we have settled this issue. So there, there will be no issue again. So once uh, the chiefs of uh, the community, that is uh, the Manya Krobo Traditional Council, have made it a point that uh, the impasse has to be resolved. I think that that must be done because it's been long uh, that we've in, we've seen ECG and the residents in the area having mm. these issues. And when uh, that particular issue happened just recently, mm. some few weeks ago, businesses shut down because mm. they couldn't run on the national grid, especially uh, people who depend solely mm. on electricity, the coal stores, the barbering shops, the hairdressing saloons and all that. So if the festival and the chiefs have agreed that at least uh, this festival should bring some sort of unity so that we resolve uh, the impasse, I think it's a step in the right direction. Mm. Uh, and Philip, for me, I think there's also an opportunity for the residents who run the various businesses to make more gains and uh, to offset the losses that they made when the lights were, were, were taken away from them. And so good news that the chiefs have uh, taken upon themselves to ensure that uh, the situation does not escalate or it does not fester into something mm -hmm. else once mm -hmm. they go ahead with their festival. I think it is also for them to know that anything that they do that happens there will not be in their own interest. So it is time for them to you know calm themselves down ensure that this festival is even an avenue for them to reunite mm, yeah, among unity. themselves and Very also important. ensure and give that assurance mm. to the electricity company that oh whatever happened previously we have turned over a new leaf yeah we are, we are not going to we, we are not going to be so that is it so the festival should bring unity and the electricity company of ghana should be given the assurance that whatever that has happened in that community wouldn't happen anymore and that they are ready to uh, abide by the rules and regulations so that they stay uh, and have some electricity in the community. You are still watching CNR Extra on City TV. If we hit a snag over government's inability to raise adequate funds. Stay with, back, stay with us, rather. We'll be back with more.
Plus is a fully skimmed evaporated milk. Creamy Plus is available in a shop near you. This message has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Hello everyone out there. Guess what? The University of Ghana, the premier university in the country, established in 1948, 1075 next year, 2023. And we are poised to begin a year-long celebration right into our anniversary year. I am Nana Abba Piamfo, Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana, and I'm excited to invite all you out there, our students, our alumni, our staff, our affiliates, and all our stakeholders to join us in this celebration. That means everyone in Ghana and a considerable number of people in the Ghanaian diaspora. We are excited about our accomplishments. We are excited about how far we have come. And we would like to invite you to join us to celebrate academic excellence over all of these 75 years. We are celebrating on the theme, nurturing resilience, adopting technology, and embracing humanism. Join us for the launch on 31st August 2022 at 10 a.m. at the Great Hall right here at the University of Ghana and all the other programs that we have outlined to celebrate 75 years of academic excellence and resilience. You are all cordially invited. University of Ghana, 1075 years old. Many thanks for staying with us on CNR Extra on CCTV. You can join us with your comments and contributions on 0550 Now, the Roads and Highways Minister, Kwesi Amwakwata, has attributed the inability of government to fulfill its promise on road infrastructure to lack of funds. Let's bring you more in this video. But the Roads and Highways Minister Kwesi Amwakwata has attributed the inability of the NPP government to fulfill its promises on road infrastructure to lack of funds. He maintains that the government has not been able to rake in enough funds since the e-levy was introduced and this has affected the road sector. There's more in the following report. Government, in a bid to address the poor road networks in major parts of the country, declared 2020, 2021 and 2022 as the year of roads. This follows the increasing demand of good roads by the citizenry, which resulted in the staging of series of protests. The Roads and Highways Minister, Kwesi Amwakwata, further noted that government could meet the demand should the public pay the electronic transfer levy. But answering questions at Parliament's Assurance Committee sitting, Kwesi Amwakwata said government has not raised enough funds after the introduction of the levy, which has had a toll in fulfilling the promise. He added that Ghana is not the only country in the world facing developmental challenges and that in more advanced countries, infrastructural development is hampered by limited resources. This issue should not be personalized. No, uh... It's an open secret that not only perhaps in our country, all developing countries, third world, even developed countries. I mean, I don't know if there is any particular country uh, around the globe which has unlimited resources. No, so it's not a question of uh, 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 finance minister or finance ministry or, I mean, the, uh, do not want this issue to be personalized. And like you said, you said we all know, and every government faces it. You all know. No. Uh, and I'm happy you said that, that every government has, uh, 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 experiences this kind of 
situation. You, you know, the previous government, the other previous governments, you know, nobody has limited, uh, uh, unlimited resources. Mr. Kwesia Mwakwata further called on the public to honor their tax obligations to help government provide the needed infrastructure development. It's a challenge that all of us must come together and call upon our people to address. That is why we must be prepared as a country, you know, to, to uh, 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 pay taxes and contribute to infrastructure. You know, so that if we pay taxes like the e levy, which was introduced, if it's supported, you know, one of the key areas for the e levy was the 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 road uh, sector. You know, so if it had been, for instance, supported, and 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 uh, you know, we could have, you know, it, it could have helped. So uh, that is that government has indicated that we don't have enough money to fix all the roads that we are mm -hmm. staging series of demonstrations and asking government to fix. It, it's, it's true because contractors are being owed. They are supposed to be paid. Uh, more roads are getting deplorable. Other areas that don't even have roads entirely are asking. Uh, residents, they are asking that their roads should be fixed. The demand for good roads keeps increasing by the day. Mm -hmm. And it looks like government needs more money to fix these roads and I remember very well that at a press conference the roads and highways minister said that if Ghanaians should support the e-levy at least we are going to get enough funds so that these roads that we are all requesting or asking that it should be fixed will be fixed but here lies the case that mm. we, we've not even had enough from the e-levy uh, after obviously, the, the, obviously the levy was introduced. not meeting its target and pretty much interesting if you get to hear our ministers always make reference to taxes taxes are good or maybe good yeah. but they do not solve all our problems mm. and if you indicated early on as you mentioned that it's true there is no money. Yeah, what, no what, what, what option is available to government? If you are not getting money, what can you do? One of the basic things you can do is to do what? Cut down your, your expenditure. expenditure. And I think a lot of, you know, uh, uh, partners, as far as a government business is concerned, have told government that it's about time to, you know, reduce some of its, its, its expenses so that it's able to, you know, raise revenue. And then, because if you keep coming to us and telling us that, we don't have money to. Uh, this is the year of rules. Mm. Uh, Actually, the, the, the year of, this is the third year of rules. Third year of rules. 2020, 2021, 2022. 2022. Yes. And then we have not been able to see a, a, a major road project being completed in the country. Philip, you have been following, you know. Well, at uh, least uh, there's uh, been uh, some major road projects. When you go from, uh, let's say, from uh, going to Kumase Road. The road has been dual. But Ghanaians like Oliver Twist are asking, are asking for, for more. And that is where the money is not coming for us to, so, so, to, to, to so get more roads. You know, and you know, you know the issue with even the Sino Hydro project. Mm. Most of them have also not been completed. Now we understand that we are going to okay. IMF. Let's see. We also have the Afrizim loan facility. That's it. So, yeah. so, so, Philip. <laughs> at least government needs more money to <laughs> fix the good roads. And uh, that's what we are asking. And that at least. Government is saying that Ghanaians should pay their taxes. So Ghanaians will pay if government will, also will, will reduces its expenses. Let's move to another story that also demands money and beneficiaries of NAPCO have threatened to drag government to court over IRS with them. Let's bring you more in this video. Beneficiaries of the Nation Builders Court, NAPCO, have threatened to drag government to court who various owed them. The beneficiaries have embarked on a series of protests to demand the payment of 10 months' allowances. These demonstrations have, however, yielded no results as the beneficiaries say they are yet to receive their stipends. The NAPCO program is expected to end by September 1. The patron of the coalition of NAPCO, NAPCO beneficiaries, Nana Berima tells City News, the beneficiaries have been left frustrated. We are planning, we are preparing to drag government to court. That is the best we can do. As soon as possible, we are still talking to legal aid for them to give us the decision. That is all. We are not going to do any procession again. We will not do any demonstration again. The best we will do it. After Pal we were just looking for parliament to uh, let me say, resume for us to petition them. After that, we will just drag them to court. Because no amount of demonstration will perturb them to pay. If they are willing to pay, fine. But after the 
final uh, exiting. We will just wait for some time. If so, they don't pay the 10 months arrears. We will compile all necessary evidence that we have been at post. We have worked assiduously in all the 10 months that they directed us to be at post. Then we will drag them to court. That's so the nation builders call um the beneficiaries are excited about the fact that they've staged a series of demonstrations but it hasn't yielded results so now the next line of action is to go to court maybe that's what will, will, will be the game changer but the people have worked it's only fair that a uh, government honors its part of the obligation or the contract because look these people are people who have been working throughout the year mm. and even the, uh, the, the the little that comes to them is usually delayed and i know that it is ending today and most of them yeah, today, have, yes. uh, have been told to you know transition to you know you start mm. which they are pretty much not happy about so i i think it, in this scenario government only has a responsibility of paying them the people have worked or they haven't worked. They have. They have. So and they said is, if they've not been paid for 10 months. Uh, uh, that, and that, that, that is a lot. That's a lot of money. 700 CDs times 10. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. translates into some 7,000 Ghana CDs. Yeah, for, 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 for all you know, someone will be able to start a business with, because right. with it. So I think government should be... Should, should, should be, should be should <laughs> I want to be careful with my choice of words, but government should just pay them. So yeah, government, government at least pay, 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 pay the beneficiaries so that they can also heave some sigh of relief as they transition to you start. Are you still watching CNR Extra on City TV? Still to come. Tipa Drivers Association to embark on indefinite strike over worsening economic conditions. We'll be back with more. Why did you push me? Leave there. Who do you think you are? You think I'm afraid of you? Bring it on. No, 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 no. The two of you, I challenge you to an arm wrestling contest to settle this right now. The Ghana Arm Wrestling Federation presents the HD Plus Kids Arm Wrestling Championships 2022. Children between the ages of 12 and 16 can take part and win trophies, certificates, medals and cash prizes. For inquiries and registration, call 0242 <laughs> Life is too short, I know if you waste time. Oh. Where they up at this wire, not the sleep, make you wake up. Oh. Who they call me if you know the party, call me later. Oh. If your girlfriend no go, go call your side, check it, make the link up. Oh. Eh. I am on a and I will go check it. Fine, fine. Good day, energy drink. Excessive drinking can be detrimental to your health. Not recommended for persons under 18 years, lactating mothers, pregnant women, and people sensitive to caffeine. This advert is FDA approved. Many thanks for staying with us on CNR Extra on City TV. And the TIPA Drivers Association has declared an immediate strike over current economic conditions. Let's bring you more in this video. The TIPA Drivers Association has declared an immediate strike over current economic conditions. Central Regional Correspondent Calvis Tete has more in the following report. 
the Tipa Drivers Association says the increase in prices of spare parts, fuel and the increase in the acquisition of various sites is impacting negatively on their business. The association says barely a month ago they announced an increase in their service charge to correlate with their activities. But this has hit a snag as customers have refused to pay the new service charge, prompting the strike action. National Chairman of the Association, Kadri Inusa, says the strike is expected to last for a week but will be extended should they fail to achieve the intended purpose. One month ago, we came out and spoke to our customers about the prices that we are selling to them. But up to date, they don't afford the price that we want. We are facing challenges. Bitterly, we are facing challenges about our customers and our car owners. See, due to our sales, these days we can't afford the sales because of the price of the sub. See, and we buy our diesel high cost, and then when we come out, we sell on a low price. So it affects us. That's why we want to go to the market. We don't want to see any vehicle from Accra or anywhere picking a sound from Kaswa to any destination. We don't want to see that. And even if compulsory, we will send the sound to other police station or any school or DC office. Local chairman of the association in Kaswa, Frankie O'Hagan, says they will use the period of the strike action to conduct maintenance work on their vehicles to reduce accidents. It's national, so we, that, we decide to do everything in equally. That is why we are uh, telling our drivers, our union members, national, you know, uh, uh, central regional Tipa Drivers Association, all, all of us to go to uh, workshop and maintenance to serve our customers too well. That is why. Due to uh, uh, sales, the way we, we do our sales, that is, we, we can't go to workshop to do our maintenance well. That is why we decided to uh, all of us to go full week uh, workshop. Amen. So this strike will certainly affect the construction of buildings mm -hmm. because you wouldn't have these um, tipper truck um, drivers moving, say, sand, gravel, stones to the construction mm -hmm. site. But the economic situation is everywhere. Uh, and, ev and everybody is feeling under the impact, uh, Philip. Uh, so we realized that just a month ago, I think they increased their service charge by 50%. Yes. Uh, and so, and you understand that uh, the increase as a, is as a result of, you know, uh, the increases in fuel prices and among other things. But uh, I didn't get any indication from the leadership of the, uh, you know, TIPA drivers that whilst they are at on strike or enforcing their industrial action, they'll they have good, some talks with, with government, the, with the government and the appropriate authorities. Because if you sit down, you don't work, and, rather they'll use it to fix, fix their, their cars. I think maybe they should reconsider. We are not saying that uh, the strike action is bad or the strike is bad, the industrial action is bad. It is something they have to do if they feel like to register their displeasure over the increases in you know their cost of operations. But they should also speak to the appropriate authorities and to and also even sit down with the customers who patronize their services because fifty percent I also think it's on a rather high high side. So what percentage can they say? Because obviously they deal with individuals, they deal with organizations in the construction side. They should sit down Georgia and then see how they are because everyone is also you know, feeling the impact of the tough times we are in. So if you also increase your service charge by 50%, the customer will also have its fair share. Just like what Guta mm. did. They uh, threatened that they were going to close or shut mm. down their uh, businesses because of the city depreciation. Sure. But they had a meeting with the mm. Council of State and uh, the issue was resolved amicably. Mm. Uh, like you are saying, if the management or the leadership of the association should take it upon themselves that, okay, during this period, we are going to judge or we are going to have conversations with the appropriate quarters so that at least some um, form of um, the solution will be brought yes. at, uh, uh, because this, this is actually going to affect people who are yeah. building yeah. Uh, you wouldn't want to say that you are going to buy uh, stones, you are going to buy sand and you get there yeah, and, and then these then drivers are on then. strike, it's yeah. going to be very very challenging so I think that with the TIPA Drivers Association 
uh, you can use this period to have some form of conversation with the appropriate quarters so that uh, the issues will be resolved. At least we will be all happy that you come back um, when issues are well resolved, then you can work um, amicably. So this is how we draw the curtains on CNR Extra today. My name is Philip Nilati and I do this with Nilati Lati. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here, Philip. <laughs> Many thanks for your time. We are grateful and still keep watching City TV.